the generally accepted CMR protocols all require multiple breath holds. And there are some real problems with that. So in Jack Imaging, it's a whole new look at compressed sensing CMR for rapid LD assessment. And I'm with Jörg Schwitter, who is the MD, Director of Cardiac MR Center at the University Hospital of Lausanne in Switzerland. And there are a number of acceleration techniques, correct? I mean, first let's talk about that, and then we'll talk about this new approach. Yeah, there is uh, a few years ago, there were the parallel imaging approach, which is now on every machine which could uh, allow us to halve the acquisition time, so we are much faster now than five years ago. And then there came up other schemes like uh, exploring the temporal, uh, temporal relationships of data, so you can end the sample and speed up acquisition. So there is a evolution in this respect also, uh, which are quite fast. But compressed sensing is, is another way to undersample and to have another way of reconstruction. So sampling of the data and reconstruction are combined in one strategy, which theoretically allows accelerations in the factor of 10 or so faster than what we do today. So it opens a, a big, a big opportunity for the future. We have to explore for what we can use then. So in the Jack Imaging paper, what are you, you focusing on? Uh, there we are looking at the very simplest approach of, of using compressed sensing. So it's in the heart, so it's not that simple. But uh, because you have two motions, br uh, breathing motion and cardiac motion, and with this very fast approach, we can acquire the 3D data set of the whole left ventricle of the whole heart in one breath hold. So we eliminate more or less all the respiratory motion. Right. That means the data that we acquire are registered in space with respect to respiratory motion, and that allows us for much easier and more accurate analysis of the data afterwards. So we, we are just looking at LV function, at, in this paper, and it showed that, that if the data are registered in, in space with respect to motion, to, to respiratory motion, we are more precise than these techniques that we have today. So we are more precise and faster. Now in terms of the end processing, is it there a longer wait period? Does it take a little yeah. more time? Yeah, it's definitely time consuming. So you need a lot of processes working in parallel. So we waited for a minute or, or longer to reconstruct the data. And we are doing now such re reconstruction on 3D data sets, it, it calculates for hours. So it's, it's another way of, of uh, extracting information from the noise in the data. Uh, so you are much more sensitive for the real information in the data, but the reconstruction algorithms are more complex, so you have to put more, uh, more uh, infrastructure in, in the computational uh, capabilities of your system. That's true. So this is a software development? It's, it's a software de development. So you, Not hardware, you so you don't need... have to buy anything new? Yeah, if you want to have the, the images pop up as fast as they came out of the machine now, you may have to invest into, uh, in, into microprocessors to have a, a very powerful uh, computer at, at, in, in your analysis tool, but theoretically you can, you can calculate the things on the machine that, we, that you have already installed at your hospital. We had no special, special uh, microprocessor or so installed for this study, but we waited, we paid this waiting time of a minute or two to get the images, so in a clinical workflow, uh, now we know it's feasible, it, it helps to, to improve uh, precision. Uh, now we should be able to invest a little bit in, in, in computational time to reduce that. So where would this come in? Where would it be the, of most value? I think a value is uh, first to be in the same time faster and more accurate for just assessment of, of uh, left ventricular function. We do studies now on the left atrium where we also want to use it uh, on the right side of the heart. Uh, I think it, it's worth, uh, a worthful information or tool in patients which are sick, which cannot hold their breath for a long time. So we are faster in that and can do studies in very sick patients, maybe in acute cardiac care patients in this population. We are faster and, uh, and, and can apply the technique to patients who can hold the breath for maybe only one or two uh, heartbeats. So are you going to be doing any additional studies? Yeah, we are doing now a lot of studies on, on the left atrium. Uh, we have just now something ready to, to submit. We don't know to which journal, but there are good journals out and they already accepted <laughs> papers Ooh. from our groups. And we, we, we do a reconstruction 3D of the left atrium right. and try to get, when combined with left ventricular function, get a more complete understanding of um, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, for example, of this diastolic dysfunction of diastolic heart failure. I think we have to understand uh, the, the combination, the interaction of left atrium, left ventricle, and for that we think we have a good tool. Well, I think this is a, a great paper and it's in Jack Imaging and uh, 
if you would take a look at that and find out a little bit more about compressed sensing for Cardiosaurus World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.